So what Rick did for you here is he included a couple game clips where you see us throwing the pop pass. Okay, there it is. This is just an unattached receiver. Okay, we're reading that B-gap defender. If he comes down into the B-gap, throw the pop. If he relates to the pop, hand the ball off. Okay, you can see the quarterback's already made that decision, and he's throwing the pop. Okay, same thing as if he was a sniffer. The problem with 3-3 teams is it's hard to throw pop against 3-3 teams if your number three is a sniffer. Now, if that had been a 4-2-5 team, he'd have been a sniffer. Okay, but when he's out there as a third receiver, it makes life a little bit more difficult on him. Go ahead and play the next one too, Rick. That's a pop from two. Okay, just a bunch of little reindeer games you can play out there. You can exchange those. It's all part and parcel of the same thing, okay? So you can leave the sniffer in there and pop him. You can pop number three. You can exchange it. The point is when you get into that lock game, it's all about reading that B-gap defender, okay? So we wanted to include a couple, couple game clips there for you to look at. All right, now here's a good one. Okay, so we're locking the defensive end, and we're reading the stack backer right behind him. Okay, two is going to bubble. Okay, but in our stuff, he doesn't bubble if he's all the way out there. He just nows it. Three's running the pop. Okay, again, if I was not playing a three-three team, I'd put a sniffer in there and I'd pop the sniffer. But with them having three linebackers, it's easier to pop a guy that's out there in space. Same generic world. Then we teach everything that is a pop pass locked first and then work back to unlock, which is completely backwards from how we teach every other RPO. Every other RPO is unlocked first and then work to lock. Um, 